Okay, now that we have our fan attached and the three front fans, it's time to go ahead and wire up the RGB, which as you can see back here, is a bit of a mess. Now this is not too uncommon. As you saw in the previous video, or heard in the previous video, trying to figure out all of these different cables can be a challenge. And even after 20 years, even I sometimes get it wrong. But that's okay, because every case is kind of telling you something as you're trying to build it. And it's always a learning process. I hope that you'll treat it as such. So in this instance, we are looking at really two, no, three sets of cables. So we have this right here. This is a SATA power cable. Now it's not uncommon that you will see these powering large sets of RGBs and particularly if you have a connector. Now for this instance, this case up at the top has an RGB controller built in and this is what is going to help power that connector. We also have a proprietary connector and this is the daisy chain. Now the RGB normally does daisy chain. I've not really seen too many of them that do not. Now granted a lot of manufacturers are going to the fact that you can daisy chain both, both the fan for RPM and the RGB, which is what tripped me up in the previous video. But in this instance, we just have a proprietary connector that we will daisy chain in order to make sure that all of the RGBs work in unison. So let's, let's pause there for a second because it's kind of an important concept to understand. Your RGBs are addressable, but there's only so many addressable units on a motherboard. And the motherboard really is your limitation here. The motherboard has two headers. That means if you connect any combination of fans to those headers, those fans are all going to be the same color. They are going to do the same action, etc. There are adapters out there that do leverage a USB hub in order to extend that capability. And this right here is one such hub. This is my Lee and Lee Unifan hub, which you can see has fan and RGB that get connected to this box. That allows the system to actually control this box via a different cable. In this case, a USB header cable that connects directly into the box. At this point, the box is able to understand input from software. That software will control this box and, be allow, and allow it to not only adjust fan RPMs, but also allow it to adjust the RGB. So you end up with multiple zones with these kind of boxes. Now, the biggest issue with this tends to be the fact that these are proprietary. Everybody kind of has their own different box, including Fantax. So if I wanted to have all three of the fans in the front different colors and my fan in the back a different color, or if I even wanted to replace my Arctic fans up there with Fantex, I could get their USB controller and hopefully be able to do that. I have to say hopefully because it's not a standard. It's actually quite annoying the fact that they haven't standardized all of this stuff. While we're on the subject of connectors, I also want to talk about these. These are simply USB header extenders. These don't give you any extra control over the RGB. They simply allow you to connect more things to a single header on your motherboard. This does give you the ability to have more fans and everything controlled in unison. It also has a SATA plug here in the back, this side. Lastly, you have Y cables like these. Now these are pretty common when you are trying to extend for just one additional fan or one additional component. You can see it has a female side, it has a male side, and under here it also has a second male side. That allows it to extend the capability of one RGB header into two areas, but that's it. You don't get any, any extra control. These two items are the same concept. They are just extenders that allow you to connect more to a single RGB header. RGB headers are on the motherboard itself. Typically they are around the perimeter. This allows it 
easy access to all of the kind of cables that are around. In this instance, I know there is one down below and there is one up top right here. That is highly common. I have seen that on multiple, multiple motherboards. The last thing that I wanna talk about before we get to wiring, there is DRGB and there is ARGB. ARGB is addressable RGB. Those use three pins, actually. It looks like this. Those three pins are critical because it is transmitting at a much lower voltage than the DRGB, which uses four pins like this. Four pin RGB headers have 12 volts. ARGB three pin headers have five volts. If you try to plug a five volt ARGB device into a 12 volt DRGB header, you will fry that device. It is too much volts and it cannot adjust for the current. So it will die a painful death. So you have to be aware of what you are installing. Now, a lot of the more modern fans and controllers and headers, they've all shifted over to the addressable RGB five volt standard. Just be aware and make sure when you are looking at the cable that you see that it has three pins like this, not four. Okay, cabling these up tends to be a rather easy task. The way a daisy chain works is you're going to see something like this. You're going to see an extender and you're going to see a primary plug. Primary plug is really there to go into the motherboard itself. That's the final chain in the daisy chain. The extender like this is really there in order to extend to the next item in the chain. The daisy chain normally is four. Sometimes you can get away with six. After that point, you do exceed the amperage of the RGB header and they don't like that. So try to keep your chain to less than six, ideally around four, which happens to be exactly the number that we have on this one chain. So I'm gonna wire this up. It's not too complicated. And then I'm gonna show you how to connect to the motherboard itself. So in this instance, you can see I have multiple, multiple cables and here is our final, final cable. You see, we could extend off of this to a DRGB header or DRGB fan, and that's how we would be able to kind of wire in additional components. We also have this. This is our final cable, and this will make its way to the motherboard. I'm gonna tuck this away for later, because the ones that I am most concerned with are the daisy chain RGB cables. One, two, three, four. We can see this one's a little tight right here. And this one here is a little tight. So as I think through a little bit of cable management, I'm gonna wanna run this along this top channel right here. And I could run this behind and get a really clean look, but I do have to be aware that I still need access to this plug right here. Okay, so I think that that's in a good position. Now, our shortest cable right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building this up. I'm gonna go back up the trunk and connect us here. And then remember this cable here that I tucked out of the way, this is the one that's gonna go to the motherboard. This is really a simple task of just snapping these together. You don't want to connect like this because then you're creating a loop. Don't do that. See how it's a loop? Don't do that. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure I have all my cables. Now this right here, this is our SATA cable. So we need to go back in our power supply and grab one of the SATA cables out of there in order to connect this. Now SATA cable can power connectors look like this. These are very common on hard drives and because we are going to add some hard drives to this case, I'm going to use a full set. What do I mean by that? You see how I have one, two, three SATA connectors there? It says SATA, G+, that's how you know that that goes to the power supply. And then these are the cables that we are going to connect. So I'm gonna attach this cable here, and then we will power up the controller right there. Okay, so now we have our SATA cable powered up. I'm gonna leverage 
this one right here. This is the closest one to it. Now there is a little L bracket on a SATA cable. Let me see if it will focus on there for you. It has a little L shape. That L shape is going to correspond to the actual cable connector here as well. That's how things get lined up. And you just give it a simple little push. That's going to lock it in place. Now it's not permanent. You can separate these with a little bit of a pull and a jiggle. But that's how you know that things are aligned. It's the pin connectors. Anytime that we are talking about headers or cables or connectors, it's because there's a series of pins going in and a series of pins going out. Those have to match. If they don't match, then you're getting the wrong volt or the wrong current sent to the wrong pin, therefore the wrong wire, and damage can occur because of that. Now the last thing that I have to do is attach this, it even says motherboard DRGB3 pin. So that's how we know that this is the cable that we need to use for this. Now they labeled it DRGB, I'm not sure why. I've always heard this called ARGB. Now on here, on this particular motherboard, the RGB headers are labeled rainbow. Now, I've only noticed that here on this MSI. I haven't seen that on a Gigabyte or an ASUS. It doesn't really matter, but just keep in mind that you want to make sure that the pins are proper. And because this is a three pin, it has a solid plug right there on the number two spot. You have to make sure that the empty pin on the header aligns to that physical plug so that you're not, you know, breaking pins. And now our two cables are properly in place. I say two because there's a fan header right there. And back here, you can see we have one extra cable here. We have this cable here, which should be powering all of the RGB off of this hub here. And there's an additional RGB element on the case on the other side. I'm not going to cable management this because that's going to be our next topic, but I want to show you the RGBs lit up. If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegrayingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. Now, one thing I should have called out. You absolutely, positively have to make sure you have the loop completed. That's this extender here it needs to be plugged into the fans so that that circuit completes. I missed calling that out in the previous portion, but there you go. We have rainbow RGB puke. At this point in the game, this is the perfect time to take care of this mess.